So I figured I'd get some of the uh, network cabling started. Um, that's a start. So I've got all the Cat 6s basically ran through their correct holes. I'm running Keystones and um, yeah, red Keystones. Fancy, huh? Well, that box has been sitting there for a while making, you know, basically a good dust collector. It's not a net gear. It's empty. <laughs> it's actually a Cisco 3750 PoE switch. Uh, yes, it's a 10100. It's 100 megabit, but it's got 48 ports and it's got a good power budget. So I'm thinking that'll work for all my IoT devices and all the random Raspberry Pis and other things, cameras, whatever that needs power over ethernet. As is with all these PoE switches from any manufacturer, they're so deep that once you slide it in all the way into the rack, there is absolutely no room for the power cable. So this rack is essentially too shallow, but you know, I'll just pull it out a little bit, put a right angle connector on it and maybe, just maybe, I'll have enough room for some patch cables in the front before the door slides on, if I'm lucky. Anyway, so that's that. One switch down. Now I just gotta have my uh, ISP come and, and uh, splice my fiber up here, and then I can move all the stash that's sitting downstairs up here, and then this will become my you know, main MDF. Um, picked up a UPS yesterday. <clears throat> Obviously, I got to have some power protection up here, so that was a very inexpensive uh, UPS. Don't need anything fancy. Don't need an APC rack mount or anything like that. It's, it's just no point. Uh, the power around here is so stable anyway that that really it's sort of overkill to even have a UPS. But it's nice just in case somebody decides to fry something next door. A ground loop or something and then all of a sudden I got a problem here. I'm dreading this task of terminating all these Cat6 cables. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Not. But it has to be done. There's like 54 of them. Oh joy. I've enlisted the help of a friend of mine and uh, at some point maybe she'll swing by and yeah, she. Mm -hmm. Maybe she'll swing by and, and do that. We'll see. That'd be cool. Then I could focus on all the points out in the building instead of doing that. Hey, Google. Stop. Countertop. So you didn't see a lot of videos from making this, but uh, I'll have a whole staircase to do the same way. So I'm sure you'll get plenty of videos of thickness planners and other things. Uh, I've got that thing strapped down right now just so that I can maybe try to avoid it being so cupped. It basically looked like a bowl yesterday. Well, not exactly a bowl, but yeah, 
Anyway, it wasn't flat. But boy, it turned out good. I like it. You know, for it being just pine, I think this is gonna turn out just fine. It's almost two inches. So my dad finished tiling this the other day, so now that's ready for the hot water heater, which is sitting right over there for now. So we're uh, drywalling this final piece and trying to get this all dressed in. We had to kind of make some custom adjustments just to get the, the water lines from, you know, not sticking out. How's it going? So we're modifying the IKEA cabinets. They're too tall because the tile is too tall over there. It's way too high up in the in the room type thing. So um, in order to get all these things even across here, um, it's like 20 feet of cabinets here. Um, in order to get them all even, we have to get the right height. So we basically have to start over there and get the right. It, you, you'll get the idea. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Project stairs. So this is a piece of oak. Actually, it's not a piece of oak. It's a piece of laminated oak. Uh, technically designed for a countertop. But I'm going to use that as a wear edge on all my treads. So we're going to cut that baby up and then we're going to laminate those two by twos over there and that's going to make some pretty inexpensive treads. It's just a matter of cutting it even. So I've already uh, planed those through the thickness planer. And this guy's gonna have to go through there as well at some point, but the thought is to chop some of this up and then uh, take it to the table saw. I realize that oak is hard to cut, but we gotta give it a shot.
Well, this thing is done. Now we just have to stain it. Just sand it down with 240 grit. I think it looks pretty good. Some more stair treads gluing up. And this is the most cruel project that I think I've undertaken so far in this project of this house. So this is the top of a chandelier. This is the part that's gonna hang up in the ceiling. Uh, it came with really tiny holes for these little puck lights and I need GU10 sockets. And so I had to enlarge those holes I don't have the right tools for it, and, and quite sincerely, I yes, I screwed one up. I, I don't think it's going to matter. I don't think it's going to show from up in the ceiling. I hope not. Um, either way, we'll figure out a way to make that pretty once it's up there. Uh, this is just a, a film that's just going to get tore off. It's, it's going to be like a chrome finish by the time we're done, but I got to make the holes bigger. So I'm using this jigsaw with a wood blade and just just making this a little bigger. It's the only thing I can figure out how to get this thing done. Yes, I'm chewing through blades, but who cares? I'm gonna get this done, I'm gonna hang it up there, and the electrician's gonna come and hook it up, and this is here just so the whole thing won't flop around and fall over. Hmm. Only two, two, three, no, two, two more holes. I've done most of them with various tools. Anything from reciprocating saw to snips to whatever. It's just, mm, mm. I'm going to be glad when this thing's done. Well, that's a start. So I got all the things in here. I just had to figure out the height of all this now and see how I'm going to get it mounted up in there. So basically the top of the chandelier is basically just a, a, a sheet of aluminum. And I have to suspend it up here somehow because there's no fastening brackets or anything to it so I don't know I have a good six inches I think between here and there so I think I should be able to do this at least that's the hope without it sticking down any Barely, but I think we can do it. Well, let's see. Hey Google, 
Turn the volume on all speakers to 10%. And that was the last Keystone. There's only like almost 60 of them, but that was the last one. Look at that. So I got fiber coming up from downstairs. Uh, we're gonna splice that together down in the electrical panel. And then I got some outdoor drops and a uh, couple down to the same place as the fiber there are those two and then uh, those are going outside on the north side i'm not sure where the other pair for the north side is but somewhere in here <laughs> thanks for the help tonight all right now i just have to get that that switch running um 3750 it's an older Cisco, but you know, these things run forever. So I picked that up just to run uh, PoE on everything. Um, it's a 48 port PoE. It's a 10 100, but I, I don't need gigabit for all these little Raspberry Pis and whatever else. So um, I'll probably replace it at some point, but for now, that's what I'm running. So. That pallet worth of stuff uh, is now all over here. And this is the railing for my porch. I went with the PVC railing. I'll never have to paint it. It's totally maintenance free. Yes, it it's expensive, but it, it's not that much more money than, you know, putting up a regular wood railing. And plus you have to paint it and maintain it and make sure it doesn't rot and all that. So. PVC no, works okay plus it's painted already or it's not painted but it's colored and it's totally colored all the way through so it's not just you know colored on the outside it's totally colored now I just gotta start putting it up <laughs> 